Hi friends and fellow Earth Angels, it's Gladys and welcome back to another one of my weekly Sunday card readings. And this spread will start by covering December 13th to the 19th or whenever you're guided to watch as I always intend these to be timeless readings. I mean, you can come back to my channel at any time, scroll through the videos to receive guidance, wisdom, insight, and support. So I'm being guided this week to encourage you to be a witness of the divine operating through you, through nature, through people, and through experiences in the world. Meaning, how can you be a witness of divine love this week? Maybe you witness a grandchild assisting their grandparent. Maybe you witness a miracle unfold before you. Maybe you witness an aha moment or a shift from great pain or great difficulty. And all of a sudden something shifts. That energy would re require you to be present with your heart fully open in its highest capacity or in a capacity that is most likely just outside of your comfort zone. So how can you practice open heart, um, divine love, and being a witness to it this week? And then you can also ask Creator, um, the Divine Mother and Father, you can also ask them to assist you with being a beacon of light this week. Ask them to operate or that force of unconditional love to flow through you this week. And maybe you'll be a witness to yourself being a divine miracle. You know, I always say every time I channel, every time I do my mediumship work, and I connect uh, clients with their loved ones in a profound, deep healing way. It is a miracle. Every time I channel these messages, I, I experience it as and witness it as a divine miracle. Sometimes when we're in these experiences and they happen regularly, we can actually become numb to or forget how profound and how blessed we are to be able to see the divine beyond the veil, beyond the world of illusions. So I chose the Mother Mary cards this week. She is uh, known as Mary, Queen of the Angels. And I also chose some, just some cards that have words on them as an expression of love to you, of support for you this week. Um, Nature's Whispers is another deck I'm gonna be pulling from, as well as Wild, the Wild Offering. And Mystical Wisdom. And then I'm gonna pull from Saints and Angels. I haven't pulled from this deck. I don't know if I've ever used this deck on this channel. Um, I haven't used it in a really long time, but I was, really pulled to it. It was actually hidden behind another deck and I was literally drawn to it. So we'll see how the order comes. I feel like I'm going to pull all the cards first and then reveal them as I go as opposed to um, pulling one, doing the reading on that, pulling another. So I know I've done that before and I think you liked that. So I'm gonna do that this time. So let me open up space, inviting in all your guardian angels and guides, the archangels, the ascended masters, the divine mother and father, and all their holy beings of light that would like to assist with this guidance for you this week. I'm also going to visualize, pretend or imagine, and you can do the same, my heart, in your heart connected to Mother Mary as well as the saints and angels because I'll be specifically working with them this week. All right. 
that, and I'm not sure if I said this, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask that the messages that are channeled be for your best and highest good and the best and highest good of all consent. Just to cover the bases. We always want to. I, I, my intention when I say that is to like up level the energy to what in theta healing we call it the seventh plane of existence or that highest vibration of unconditional love in the vibration or the plane of creator so when i say i ask that this reading be for your best and highest good and the best and highest good of all concern my intention is to go back past the fifth and sixth plane and go up to the seventh uh plane of existence is where a creator and divine love is so you can really see the magic of that energy as i do these readings week after week and there's so beautiful they unfold so beautifully so that's and you feel it in your heart right you feel it like as almost like a pull or like a truth that speaks to your heart it kind of like bypasses your mind right and then afterwards we can overthink it and analyze it and all that stuff <laughs> so and that's just the the beauty of working with the ego self and the divine self all right mother mary what message do you have for the earth angels this week message do you have for the earth angels what do you want them to know all right so there's that one very clear inner child you know what's crazy <laughs> i almost pulled out my uh, cards uh, the angel cards i use for children i almost pulled that and i didn't so and i was feeling that child energy it says i nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care so when I was talking earlier in the intro about being a witness, being fully present, being a witness of the divine, when we observe children, they are in their purest form. Uh, my cousin and I were having a conversation and we were talking about things that we love. And I was talking about how I had taken up country line dancing and I'm really having fun practicing and the choreography and learning and just learning like dance and twirling and moving. And um, it feels really good. And, you know, she said to me, you know, because I was always always a dancer uh, growing up you know for god maybe i think i i, I was still doing recitals in my early 20s and uh, she said you know she's like i can see that she goes in my eyes you've always been a tap dancer because that was my my favorite uh dance style was tap dancing and she goes it makes sense that in order to exercise and revitalize that energy that you'd go back to that and then she said are we all are we all not our most purest true selves when when we're at the age of seven and i just thought it was just such a profound statement um, because she's not as uh spiritually she doesn't delve into the spiritual world as much as i do so you know her getting her perspective and, and she's very grounded and she's very very stable and, and and uh she's very she reminds me of like earth energy and uh to receive that i'm like yeah we're going back to that pure essence of innocence connecting with the inner child and with the inner child, it's very easy for fears to get activated, right? Because children are absorbing. They're learning through absorbing from their environment, through the energy, through the experiences they're having. And that programs and kind of defines their little spirits and their souls, right? In the shadow and the light and what they're going to do to transform the shadow and light as divine beings as they grow and become educators in the world and teachers and they go out into the business world and work with the planet so so this week connecting with your own inner child in a compassionate nurturing soothing way almost like an inquiry like what do you what do you need from me and a lot of times it's understanding it's patience it's compassion so, for example, um, last week, I was trying to open a jar of marinara sauce. 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 <laughs> I was going to sound like my, my New England, Rhode Island accent was about to peek, peek out. So, I was about to open a jar of marinara sauce. And it slipped as it opened and 
three quarters of the jar fell on my, I have a, a rug runner in my kitchen and it fell all over my brand new runner rug. And I just looked at it and I was like, well, that is a dreadful mess. Now I can say the old me, I would have annihilated myself for it. I would have gotten really upset. I would have gotten really angry. And I just looked at it as like, and and this is kind of like practice what you preach kind of thing. I've been saying, looking at mistakes as an opportunity to learn, grow, evolve, shift, right? And so I just kind of looked at it and I just took a deep breath and kind of like a sigh, like, well, (laughs) now we're, now we're going to deal with this. And so I noticed that I was so incredibly compassionate and understanding of myself through that. And I grabbed a towel and the rug cleaner and I just had patience with cleaning it up and not once did I annihilate myself. Not once did I get angry. Not once did I get annoyed and aggravated with myself for not quote unquote being perfect. Now, I've been working this entire year on patience and surrender and flow and allowing what is to be what is, as challenging as that is. And it's so interesting how that experience was like a culmination of how I could be a witness of my own personal growth. And actually, <laughs> I was really proud of myself. So understand when we when we have these hiccups and bumps, and, and I also contributed to, I am very well rested. <laughs> I am also very well at peace I feel stable provided for and and really that's what this this year has offered for me a break you know for 13 years I've been going 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 doing inner work and working with clients and growing a business and healing from relationships and and understanding love and the masculine feminine and energy so this year was almost like a break for me the break that I needed <clears throat> And it's no coincidence that um, October I start I celebrated or I stepped into my 13th year in business, which is the year of the divine feminine, and she's all about nurt- nurturing, compassion, and I thought it would be energy that I would embody in my business, but it really was the culmination of what I needed within my own soul and soul spirit, and then eventually I teach that, right? So... Working with the inner child this week is almost just listening, understanding, and soothing. And in turn, you be a witness of your own miracle. All right. So let me pull all the other cards. All right, Mother Mary, what additional messages do you have for the collective this week? are where are these the wild offering I always think of this as Ganesha the remover of obstacles and the saints and angels whoa how many that's too many all right let's see let's just make it a little more Endeavor. So, (laughs) with this card, I'm seeing the possibility of scattered energy, uh, maybe trying to do too much, and not fully grasping your own 
unique spin on things. So this could be for the Earth Angel creators. And maybe this week you're being asked to pull back and saying, what does, what does your inner child really get excited about doing? So maybe you've been working on projects and just challenged with the joy and the excitement and the play into it, right? Think about when when kids are playing with Play-Doh or finger painting or they're building something or making mud pies in the backyard. There's like joy in that. So I'm seeing like the words like crystal clear endeavors and meaning like a clear pathway forward based on what lights you up. Some of you may need just need a break. (laughs) Some of you may be working quote unquote hard, doing something to get something. Maybe you're tired, maybe you're burnt. And really the laws of energies are just going to create more of that energy depletion. Um, I'm seeing uh, like rest, pull back. Um, I'm seeing like the scattered energy, meaning like pick something. Um, Sometimes we feel, especially with the earth angels who are growing businesses right now, or maybe you're in your spiritual practices, there's so many fun things that we can get involved in, right? We can make teas, there's essential oils, there is um, all different kinds of healing modalities. There's obviously card readings and different things we can do with that. Then there is uh, like coaching work. There's so many things that we can do under this umbrella and there's a, a plethora of things out there. I'm feeling for some of you that are watching, this card is saying, connect with the inner child and ask the inner child what would be the most fun thing to do. A crystal clear endeavor, embarking on something. You know, we have the number uh, 9 to 12 here. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 3 for me is the energy of balance. It's the energy of the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son. I mean, I'm sorry, the Holy Trinity uh, representing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the balance of the masculine and feminine. So, Maybe some of you, and, and really this this is just for you to be aware of. Ask creator, ask the divine to show you, allow you to be aware of where the adjustments need to be made. Uh, allow, allow creator, allow um, Shakti, right? That divine feminine force in her creativity, in that flow to show you this week, right? And she can certainly do that when you've activated your inner child of joy, play laughter and if you're not feeling like you're in that space um like oh I don't want to play or oh I don't feel like joy then that's when you need the rest the most that's when you need to take the time out and put things down um you know one of my biggest awarenesses this year was I rested a lot um I pulled back from the need to want to grow expand evolve create and really kind of went into this self um like cocoon of sleep hibernation and what one of the awarenesses that I had was that I was provided for my bills have gotten paid I got a roof over my head my house is warm my dog got fed (laughs) I got gas in my car like Despite not being on the quote unquote hunt of the, you know, the, the business woman, I was still provided for. And so that, that big awareness is like, you mean I don't have to constantly be pushing and forcing and being on the hunt? I can still. And so what I, I learned was that I was able to create stability and security from that, um, that abundance of creator's energy that regardless of what I'm doing when I'm in that place of self-nurturing and soothing and taking care of myself and peace I'm just manifesting all that I need right I think I mentioned in my video a couple weeks of one of my my readings a couple weeks ago that in that moment in time I was uh, completely content or I was completely at peace in my life, like I had, how did I phrase it? I had, a, I, I didn't have a want for anything. 
And it was such a profound place for me to be in because it made me realize that for a very long time, I was under this space of like desperation, needing to force or make things happen, right? And this year, you know, because I've been able to recharge and recoup and recover and heal, um, all parts of me. I mean, obviously, we're always on this this course of healing. We're always on this course of growth. We're always learning. We're always evolving. But I really scale back into that place of simplicity, right? Appreciating and savoring all I had in the moment. And that was enough. And because of that, it naturally brought in all the other things that I needed. Uh, friendships developed this year. Security and stability developed for me this year. Creative ideas. And I was able to observe a lot. I was able to observe a lot of things. And because of that, I was able to plan my course of action for 2021. And so um, I feel because I was able to pause, because I was able to pull back, because I was able to, to observe and really get to know myself on a deeper level, I have this crystal clear intention of my purpose in this moment because the more you evolve, the more you want, the more things uh, will shift and change for you. So I got really clear this year of what my pull is, what my calling is, and it came from life coming to a screeching halt. So let me move on to the next card here. Solitude, I'm telling you. Once you embrace the inner divine in your own sacred solitude, the right people arrive at the right time, exactly on schedule without forcing or chasing. It's exactly what I mean. I know we live in a world that has so many teachings based on action and the hunt, doing something to get something. Now, I'm not saying don't do those things. You're going to need the will, right? And you're going to need, uh, like the will is the part of creativity to, to get something done. And if you're not feeling the will or the motivation, that's where we're saying pull back and create balance with the divine feminine, with the solitude, with the rest with observation, with going to that abyss of energy within. And I think this is, it's making it more clear how in the beginning of the reading, I mentioned be a witness of Shakti, the divine feminine energy of beauty, of radiance, of growth, of, of, of the miracle of life that's all around you awareness this week you know you can ask creator you can ask the divine feminine you can ask um the energy to show you how to be a witness of miracles right so so the best thing you can do is when you your home or you go out if you're going out um practice presence uh, 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 my one of my greatest mentors one of my teachers that you know her her presence in my life was um, a divine miracle and one of the things she used to say was be where your butt is if your butt is in the car be there if your butt is at work be there if your butt is at home be there be where your butt is right so if you can practice presence this week and then, and, and really it's bringing your attention from like your mind down into your heart and, and being aware of your environment. Um, you know, I was practicing this earlier before the reading of just awareness and then really being aware of what I was aware of, right? That's kind of the, the place you go into with meditation. You want to achieve the awareness of the awareness, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, just let those words just seep into your soul and eventually it will grow. You know, I'm planting seeds for some people. I'm speaking truth to some people. I'm setting a pathway for some people. And um, for others, you're realizing that you've outgrown what I'm offering. <laughs> and that's fine too. Um, so... I was just sitting, like meditating, being aware, and I noticed my heat kicking on and the ticking that it makes uh, in, in when it kicks on. And for example, I noticed that my attention and my awareness went to the heat and I was just surrounded because the heat comes on like all over the apartment and my apartment's like really quiet and I could hear that ticking all over the apartment. So then I was aware that that's where my awareness was. And in that moment, I felt bliss. <laughs> there was this peace, 
So it's this abyss of energy, right? So this is what we're talking about with solitude. If you're like, oh, I don't want to stop or, oh, I've got so much to do. It seems counterintuitive. Oh, I hate silence. That is your ego, right? That's the ego part of you. And that's how you can use the ego as your power, right? You can notice the resistance of the ego wanting to pull you away from the food, the mana, the stuff that's going to nourish your soul. Listen, we would all, I'm sure, love to have haagen ice cream every night. We'd love to have a fast food burger or <laughs> for me, um, not a burger, but something else fast food, french fries or a, a milkshake or something, but we can't have that all the time, right? So our body needs and craves fruits and vegetables and herbs and supplements that are going to defeed like our, our 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 body right so um so when the ego says oh no 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 don't don't eat that you know spinach and uh rice and whatever order takeout get the pizza get the onion rings right i hope i'm not triggering food cravings either and <laughs> if i am fight it right you don't need that stuff right uh, because it really just affects your pituitary glands, your pineal glands, your thymus, your hypothalamus. It really makes your uh, crystal clear intentions and your clear endeavors like foggy and confusing. Uh, so now I'm not demonizing that food. It's just when we're using that to cover the emotional, like, um, if we're, we're using that to escape, right, into understanding and embracing the feelings and the emotions, um, we can notice, we can notice, you can become aware of like the trickery, right, of the ego. You can be aware of the, the, the shadow stuff that comes up. And when you're aware of those things, you can say, oh, I see it now. I get it, right? That's the that's the that's the importance of being fully present, not to shame, right? We want to go into that inner child saying, "I understand it now. I hear you." And um, the other night, I was struggling with. I was hungry. I was on that cusp where you know you just about get hungry and like you're just about to order takeout because you're so hungry. And I just sat with it for a little while, and I ended up coming. And I actually went on to the to the place where I usually get takeout. Is um, a plant city in Providence, which is an excellent restaurant, and um, and and does have healthier options. Uh, and so I went on there, and I was looking at one of the burgers, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, the vegetarian burgers!" I'm like, "I could make this at home. I had all the ingredients, and I made it at home, and it was so much better." And I was so proud of myself. And so that's that part of like my inner child, that place of solitude, pulling back from the impulse, right, uh, of wanting to make something quick and easy, and then being able to put the energy into to making something for myself, uh, making ingredients and things that were going to nourish my soul, right? That's that's the energy of being present, of pause instead of impulsive and trying to take uh, immediate action. So I hope the messages are coming across clearly this week. Observe, uh, pull back, go into the place of solitude once you embrace the inner divine. And your own sacred solitude, the right people arrive at the right time, exactly on schedule without forcing or chasing. I know it sounds counterintuitive because like I said, that ego wants to say, do something, do something, do something. So I just say, just practice it. Just pause and just surrender into the divine. Create space, right? Space for the divine to operate and work with you, through you. And watch what happens you'll most likely be pleasantly surprised and what unfolds afterwards might be better than you could have forced to make happen yourself. So, um, saints and angels here. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. So here's the child again. Look at this beautiful, radiant, happy soul. And she is playing the guitar. So again, I'm feeling for the earth angels this week. Get back to those things that you love to do when you were seven uh, or in that stage between like 
six and eight you know seven feels like a really beautiful number seven i'm just realizing seven is uh the divine feminine number it's when you're on the seven path of your nine year cycle or you're in the seventh year of your nine year cycle it's a year for inner work it's a, a year of transformation last year was my seven for me and i did a lot of deep deep healing deep inner work which i brought forth into this year when i worked with clients um, so seven is a like um, inner wisdom and so I'm feeling like this child is going to help remind you who you are and what you've come to this earth to experience really our purpose here on this planet is to hmm let me see here. I know, I know, I know the words I want to start with. I know the words I want to end with. I want to see how I want to connect it here. So happiness is our purpose. Happiness is our purpose. And so earth angels, we are really great at being of service to others. And that is, um, nourishes happiness in others, right? I, I think I used the example last week of when I give my dog a treat. He gets so excited about getting this treat. I get excited about giving him the, the treat. <laughs> then when he gets the treat, he enjoys it and I enjoy the joy that he gets from it. <laughs> and it's just pure joy. So we're being asked to um, experience um inner happiness right inner peace inner happiness without having to constantly be giving of service right we get this zing we get this high we get this 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 boost of of being of service to bring happiness to others but we have to remember we also have to receive that and this week being a witness for the divine miracle, being a witness of creator operating in this world, being a witness of joy all around you will activate that inner happiness and inner peace. And you know, I'm going to say when you feel it in your soul, when you feel it in your chest, when your heart opens and expands and your shoulders go back, say creator more of this, bring me more of this feeling in my life this or something even better that's the power right you're creating the will uh to create and in in turn uh the divine feminine energy can't not go out and bring that to you because that's when you're most magnetic and this works for masculine energies and feminine energies however you um operate it's based on dropping into the feeling right so you could just walk around your neighborhood and look at Chris Christmas lights. You could um, be a witness of families experiencing joy if you're on social media and you're seeing happiness in families and the joy. Just be a witness to that. And from there, being able to receive it and saying, God, yes, more of this or something even better. Uh, the ego part may want to make you feel bad about it or I want that or I don't have that or I'm lonely. That's where you know in that moment you've got to do some work, right? Being able to release it, saying, creator, I'm feeling this. And that's how you can transform that energy into your power, right? Instead of being uh, feeling stuck by it and uh, like, um, like sad from it. That's how you can recognize it. Be aware that you're feeling that way. And in that moment, call on creator, call on the divine to assist in shifting that saying, show me the beauty, show me the love, show me what I need to know about this, right? And then you create pause and stillness in the solitude to understand it. Beautiful. Hmm. It's interesting. I'm seeing like the children here have music like a music sheet music notes i nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care and then oops excuse me i bumped the camera and then um this child has a guitar so for for some of you this week maybe uh listening to some music that lights you up uh what i'm enjoying right now is carrie underwood came out with a beautiful new Christmas album um, and her son is on the album John Legend is on the album and 
it, it, when I first listened to it, it literally brought tears to my eyes. It's so beautiful and so soulful and so, I want to say Christian, but I don't mean it in uh, like a religious way. I mean like in a like Jesus as my friend, as my love, as my confidant, as my guide, as my teacher. Like I just felt that energy through that album. So, you know, if you're looking for some new music, I would maybe say check out check out that if you have, you know, uh, one of those apps like um, I have Tidal. Um, but if you have Spotify or or um, iHeart or something where you can listen to full albums, uh, it's just it's just such a, a great. Um, album. So listen to music this week in solitude. What music speaks to your soul? Okay. Let me see here. All right. Let me pull the last card here. Seven heavenly virtues. Keys to goodness. So I'm going to read them. I'm going to pull out the book. Um, and so I feel like connecting with the inner child, connecting with laughter, play, music, getting it, that that peace in presence and awareness and solitude, observing, knowing your purpose here is to be a beacon of love, be a beacon and a channel of happiness and peace. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And when we feel that within, the creative energy gets activated and then we're inspired to move in a direction, right? It's so easy to fall into looking at the outside world. What does the outside world want of me? What is it? What does it need? What is everybody else doing? What is working? And you have to understand that, you know, when you see people in their success, and you see people in their expansion. They're in the result part of their manifestation. What you don't see is all the energy, the work, the time, the, the confusion, the fear that went into that result, that success. So you have to remember that what you're seeing or what's being projected into the world from, from any facet, it could be a football player, it could be a musician, it could be uh, an actor in Hollywood, it could be uh, a, a, a spiritual teacher. It could be, you know, when you say like, wow, look at all the knowledge or look at all the wisdom or wow, they really know a lot or wow, they're really doing really well. You have to understand that you're, you're a witness to the result of their manifestation that took many, many years probably of time and energy and learning and patience, right? So remember, you're all on this journey um, and, and understanding that can help you have even more clear endeavors when, when you go within and listen to what your heart wants. Um, this YouTube channel came from a divine a divine seed that was implanted within me. When I asked creator, how do I expand my reach? How do I be um, a beacon of light and expand my reach to more people effectively <laughs> with a good use of my energy? And I got the image of the, the angel cards. And at the time, I rejected angel cards. For me, I thought they were, like, my ego was like, oh, they're cheating. I don't I don't need angel cards to channel, right? To, I can read energy without the cards. And that was such my ego, keeping me away from the exact thing that my soul needed, right? And so when I could recognize that, I'm like, oh, I see the trickery, I get it, right? And that's how I've been able to, to learn about the ego and experience it. Instead of resisting it, embracing it, and befriending it, I've actually turned it into my power. And now it is aggravating and annoying and frustrating and confusing when it gets activated, right? But it takes time to pull back and go into that solitude. What am I learning from this? So Anyway, when I went on YouTube to look up card readers, I saw that it was a whole thing. I didn't even know that it was a thing. <laughs> Again, because I'd rejected the card. So that was a seed that was naturally planted inside my heart. And the universe is saying, come to us. We want to naturally plant seeds within you that aren't coming from the external world. Um, all right, so let me get the book here. So the seven heavenly virtues. I love that this came up. So... Because in this deck, there's also the deadly sins. <laughs> so we've moved past that and now we're going into the seven heavenly virtues. So here we are. It says, you represent spiritual enlightenment, divine knowledge and wisdom. You have faith, 
and believe in all that is good and meaningful. You have a deep, intuitive understanding of God, the angels, and the universal spirit. You know the keys to goodness, and you are being asked to use this knowledge to empower and teach others. I love it. So the seven heavenly virtues are faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice, patience, and temperance. So um, for the sake of time, I am going to put the book up here. And if you want to pause the video and take a screenshot, it's funny because it's on page uh, 53, which is eight. Eight is cycles and rhythms, but it's also abundance and power. So it's beautiful beautiful card, a beautiful number to land on. Seven heavenly virtues, keys to goodness. If you want to take this, pause this video and screenshot it, there's more of a description here for you to remember. You've come to this planet to be the embodiment of faith, hope, charity, fortitude, never giving up, justice, patience, and temperance. So the word that you might find the most troubling or the most like resistant to, um, focus on that first. Um, <laughs> mine is temperance. I know that. Practicing self-control and moderation. <laughs> I know that. So I would take this and I would say, okay, creator, um, show me your definition of temperance. Show me how to embody temperance now within myself and then radiate out that. And so because it's self-control, what will happen is I'll probably want to eat junk food or I probably would want to, I know I'd need to read a book or do something and I'll probably get distracted on something else. But because I'm aware of it, because I'm practicing awareness of my awareness, it would be that where I would transform and saying, okay, show me self-control. Show me that what that looks like. And then, um, so for example, um, Taylor Swift just came out with, I think her ninth album. And she put out two albums this year in a year when the world told you this was the worst year and nobody was doing anything. This woman, now regardless, she's human. So regardless of how you feel about her or what her beliefs are, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this woman took <laughs> her creative energy and she put out two albums this year, despite what the world of illusion said, this is the worst year and you shouldn't and you can't and you don't. And um, she took it and she transformed it. And I have to say, I, I love both albums. They speak to my, my soul. I, I really enjoy the music that she's putting out. Um, and um, for me, I see it as like the creative energy, the creative flow. And, and so she, she needed self-control, right? She needed to sit down and be creative when she was surrounded by an entire world that was like um, saying, like putting negative energy out there, right? Or, or, or putting uh, like heavy, like heavy suppressive energy out there. And like the fact that there are people out there that are still growing, still evolving. Um, you know, I was feeling pressure to do certain things and, you know, you know, put things out there. And then there was another part of me that I just kept saying, rest, leave it alone, rest. There's time for that. Have patience with yourself. You need to rest. <laughs> and so I had to practice self-control without being impulsive and trying to force and make something happen and just pull back and allow things to unfold naturally. So that would be an example of looking at those words, looking at the definition and what you feel the most challenged or the resistance by or where you just know you need work, right? This is the part of experiencing learning, right? I mean, I have, I have full faith. I mean, <laughs> faith is amazing for me. And, you know, I mean, obviously we're always challenged and, you know, I, that faith just kicks in right away. So that would be something that I'm more comfortable in where temperance would be something more that I'd want to focus on. So activating the seven heavenly virtues this week or understanding that going into solitude, joy, play, laughter. I mean, obviously we're in the holiday holiday, Hanukkah, um, we, uh, Hanukkah, I think was, uh, Thursday, uh, last week. Um, and then we have Christmas coming. 
Um, on top of it, in the astrology, we just dropped into the 1212 portal. So we're still in the eclipse tunnel and we will have a solar eclipse on December 14th. And then we will have the winter solstice on December 21st. So we're in this eclipse tunnel on top of the 1212 portal that opened up, which will, will be another tunnel from December 12th to the winter, winter solstice. So this is a really powerful childlike divine feminine like activation of wisdom and insight um i have been guided to to i know there's a lot out there about a powerful time to manifest and a powerful time to put intentions and energy and but if you're coming from the place of desperation leave it alone if if you've been like on it and on it i want i want i need i need leave it alone Allow space, allow yourself to breathe, leave it alone. You don't have to manifest and create and constantly putting energy towards it. (laughs) Sometimes it's like, put it away, leave it alone, put it on pause. And how can you activate and divert your attention elsewhere and laughter, play, adventure, fun, freedom, knowing that the divine knows, the divine knows, right? where you're going, what you need, what it has for you. So, so many of you need to, um, myself included, leave space for it to come in, right? All right, I think that's all I have to say. Let me just check in real quick. Yeah, so with the card here, it's like, look up, look up, catch, catch the miracle. Here we go, catch the miracle, the shooting stars, the wishes, right? Catch the miracle through these divine virtues. Really, the biggest thing you've come onto this planet is to activate the energy of happiness and love. Be the embodiment, especially in a world that is clouded in illusion, walking in the fog, um, not really sure what to believe and is fearful, which is all understandable. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. And so this entire year has been giving you foundational skills and tools to support the uncer- to support you in the uncertainty the unknown next year we're moving into the age of Aquarius right uh it's technology uh technology is going to be insane right and and we all know there's a shadow and light side to technology and then also it's about community and family it makes sense that I started my subscription program this year right that it is is growing and will grow into 2021 where people are looking for or being guided to um, new levels of support right so different types of communities will come together uh, different fi- family dynamics you know your your people quote unquote will start to magnetize towards you your friendships will be different so you'll be in a place of uncertainty and unknown but it's it'll be magical and it'll be scary and it'll be confusing and all those things right so when you can use your divine insight wisdom intuition to go within when you can use your regular practices of stillness and pause when you can call on the divine feminine the divine masculine energy to help you with balance all the things we talked about this year um, are going to assist you on being able to move forward in a world of mass uncertainty and um, what could appear to be confusion right so I'm seeing, for those of you who are inspired by Christianity, I'm seeing the star of Bethlehem, right? And the three wise men knew that that the king was born. And, um, you know, I'm being, follow the star, right? This is the energy that we're in. Um, And look up and follow the light, right? Follow the, uh, the message, the guidance that comes from within, right? That comes from dreams, that comes from divine inspirations, it comes from the abyss and, and wealth of wisdom within, not from your head, not from your mind, <laughs> right? If you've got tension in your head and, and uh, like your, your brain's being squeezed, <laughs> you're in the ego part. Again, noticing that, taking a deep breath and dropping down into your heart and being able to allow the divine to flow through you, to move energy in front of you. All right. I said a lot of things. 
As always, it's a general reading, so take in what resonates and dump the rest. For some of you, this is foresight of what's to come. For some of you, it's a validation of what you're in. For some of you, planting seeds. And like I said earlier, for others of you, it is just showing you that you've outgrown the space that I'm in. <laughs> so, and that's fine too. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let me close space, thanking all your guardian angels and guides, the archangels, the ascended masters, the divine mother and father, and all their holy beings of light that assisted with this guidance for you this week. And I'm going to ask that any healing that was started continue for as long as it needs to be done. And so it is. All right, so if you know somebody who would benefit from a reading, whether it be mediumship, my life purpose work, divine guidance from the angels, or all of the above, I'm going to put a link in the description box below to my gift certificate page. It's a beautiful time to give divine love, to, gu to give divine wisdom, divine power, right? So if you know somebody who'd be open, if you know somebody who is, 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 is needing some type of divine support and you're feeling like, yes, I want to get that for them, um, um, uh, I'm going to put a, a link in the description box below. So gift certificates are always open. They're always on my website. The option's always on the website under the resources button. Or if you scroll to the bottom of the page at GladysEllen.com, there is a button that says purchase gift certificates. You can print out an immediate gift certificate. So you could get one on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, print it out on your computer, or... I think you have about a week left if you want it before Christmas, if you want a hard copy of it. So if you do, there's that option, but I would suggest doing that ASAP because we just don't know what the mail, um, the, the mail delay is going to be like. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you want more videos like this, if you want um, to subscribe to this type of energy, click the subscribe button, the notification bell, um, the like button, leave a comment below. Um, you are coming up with some amazing descriptions or, or you're seeing amazing insight. I'm getting emails and you're commenting on what you see in the cards and I think that's beautiful. So thank you for doing that. I mean, you're contributing to a very lovely energy. So more of that um, or something even better. So thank you for being part of this channel and I wish you love this week. As always, you know, I love you to the moon. God loves you so much. Trust your intuition. Um, trust the divine. Trust your intuition. And I send you love with heavenly hugs. Bye for now.